Assalamu alaikum and welcome Iftar Insight viewers. We are here at the Dow Village South Urkuch Jamaat and uh, very soon we will be speaking to the Imam and certain members taking us through a walk and a journey of the history of this wonderful family oriented village style Jamaat in the deep south lands of TNT. Uh, behind me now, it is the portion of the evening where it comes closer and closer to the break of fast. And so traditionally, as I can remember, some almost two decades ago coming here, uh, the congregation would be on the inside, the making of dua, the reading of Al-Quran. Of course, we have all heard it before in many of the episodes. This is the month of the Quran. And so this is what the engagement is. This is where the bonding is. Uh, at this Jamaat in particular, as I can recall, as a young man. And so, uh, much of the elder heads still do keep the practice. And uh, Alhamdulillah, a lot of the younger ones as well have followed suit. They have a lot of classes here, uh, a lot of very uh, interesting Quran reading. And so, uh, you may, inshallah, pick up some of that later on. But this is really the gist of what it is here, keeping really in focus and linking and making the connection with the Creator uh, in order to please Him because fasting is for Him and everything that we do in this month inshallah would be to our benefit but it is really for the pleasure of our Creator and so everybody makes this extra effort as exhausting and as tiring physically the demands of fasting are. Uh, a true Muslim really never gives up on the opportunity to serve his Lord in the best way possible and at this time, nearing the break of fast, this truly is in embracing the words of the Creator itself. Could be none greater than that. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. And this is what it is about here at this particular journey. <laughs> So we're inside the masjid here at Dao village in South Orokuch and as you can see from the setting, uh, we are well inside of a classroom. The masjid here at Dao village in South Orokuch also serves as an early childcare and education centre. And this is something that is not uncommon at other masjids across the country. Whether they double as early childcare and education centres, whether they double as schools that offer uh, full primary and or secondary education level programs uh, this is a, a actually a quite common setup in fact there are some masjids uh, whose emphasis is uh, primarily on education outside of the core islamic of course and there are some masjids as well where the there is a mix of secular and islamic education being offered there are also some masjids as well that employ uh, strictly an islamic curriculum of sorts but education in islam and education and islam uh, have a history that goes um, centuries back in case you didn't know, the first university that was ever established in the world was established by Muslims many, many moons, many centuries ago. So education plays an integral role in the life of a Muslim. And the, it is no surprise in continuing with the tradition that many mosques across Trinidad and Tobago also serve as educational centers. So the next time you pass your village mosque or the next time you're passing, passing by on any masjid in particular, look below the sign of the masjid to see if there's another sign that indicates to you whether this masjid also doubles as an educational academic center as well. Chances are you may very, be, very well be surprised that the answer is yes.
Well, my dear viewers, in this 11th episode, we've come down to almost the tail end of Trinidad and Tobago. And we are actually, as you visit every mosque, normally the highlight uh, with the introduction to every uh, iftar insight would be the dome of the mosque. And quite funny enough, the acronym uh, DOME actually applies to this masjid. Let me explain. We are presently at the DOME, the Dao Oropuch Ashja Masjid. So we have the Imam here of over 40 years. He has been the Imam since a teenager. And Alhamdulillah, he looks better than much teenagers that I have seen around today. So without much further ado, I'd like to approach Imam Rashid Shah and bid him Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. Imam Sahib, as a pleasure, Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak to you, you and your family. You. All right, and thank you for accommodating us uh, for this short but very informative feature, Iftar Insights. And so, thanks for making us one of, one of the Jamaats to visit. So we do have some questions from some of our viewers checking us out over the last 10 days. And I'd like to throw some of these questions to you to, to, yeah. give, to give some feedback. Sure. Uh, the first one would be, is there any scriptural reason why men and women are separated during prayer? This is from Rion, a non-Muslim observer, checking us out on Iftar Insights and wants to get some more information. Sure. So uh, the question refers to scriptural reasons, right? Yes. But there are also scriptural evidence. Yes. You know? Where men and women are separated during the time of prayer and also in other functions. Because number one, now separation does not mean discrimination. You know? It means that we value each other to such an extent that this respect and honor is shown because we understand the free intermingling, what it is causing and what it can cause, right? So Islam at the outset mentions, especially at the time of the Prophet Sallam, when they used to pray, you know, the women used to leave the masjid first and then the men used to follow afterwards. In the Quran also, in Surah Azab, in verse 53, the whole aspect of screening and not watching in their faces and not, you know, because of the obvious fitna. Lowering your gaze and so on. And so, you know what I mean? Yes. I mean, I say it's, it's, it's very obvious. Yes. So the main reason really we see is that to protect the individuals. True? Sure? Yes. Because everybody will know what will happen with the free intermingling of men and women. Yes. You know? Irregardless of the setting. Right. Yes. So Thank purity you. of the heart is the most important, you know, reason, you know, for this injunction. Making sure that that is well secure and intact. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. And uh, we have another question here. Uh, what is the purpose of the stairs and the pulpit? Also from a, a non-Muslim observer. Sure. So it's not really stairs, you know. It's called in Islam the mimbar. It is a raised platform where khutbah or sermon is given. Lessons and teachings take place. It can be aligned to the altars in other churches where the priest or the pundit might go on a higher platform in order to address, address the crowd. Yes. So it's simply that, you know. So it's no significance to say, well, you know, if you don't have a member, you can use a chair, you know, sir? Yes. So it's not necessary if you have a, you know, an altar you know, to give a sermon, but it's just that raised platform that you give the sermon from. Yes. You pay your attention to. Yeah, focus is on your that. focus is there. Yes. Yeah. So I hope that that answers some of the questions that, that we put forward to Imam Sahib. And uh, speaking so eloquently to us this afternoon here from his office uh, at the, the Dome, uh, in South Trinidad, we'd like to ask him now, you know, what message, Imam, would you like to share to our Muslim viewers? Uh, taking into account, we do have quite a lot of non-Muslim Muslim. viewers uh, taking appreciation and trying to understand uh, what the iftar and what us Muslims do during this special sure. time. So normally, you know, there's a misconception about fasting in Islam, you know, in that most people feel that fasting in Islam 
is just staying away from food and water and so on, you know. But this is the least of all. Fasting in Islam, you know, focuses on the individual soul, you know. So Almighty Allah, you know, God Almighty teaches us that remove your importance from the body and focus on the soul. So when we focus on our soul, then our soul becomes strong. You know, Amen. if you look in our country today, we'll see the situation among human beings, especially young people. We cannot keep up with the murder rates. Hmm? Also, when the human beings are the best creation of Almighty God, why is it you know, we cannot live in harmony with respect and honor? You know why? Because we have been starving the soul. The soul has become very weak, you see. You know? Yes. So that is why, you know, fasting, you know, today we have to really, you know, remove the emphasis from the intake of food and the emphasis on the guarding of our senses, whether it be our ears, our eyes, our nose, our hearts, all of these, you know? That's the focus, you know. This is what we should be fasting. That's with. it, that's yes. it. Yes. So that at the end of the day, such a beautiful individual will come out that our country, our village, our homes, our community will be such a better place to live in. Yes. You understand? Yes. In some of the of, of the narration, it says, when we fast, we must fast with our eyes, fast with our ears, with our mouth, with our hands, with our feet, because these are the gateway to the heart. Yes. You understand? So if we fast like that, then the heart will become very pleasant, yes. very accommodating, you know, we have a lot of empathy for people, all of this. The heart, when the heart becomes pure, then you'll see all the action of the limbs will also be pure. Be pure. And this is what we need in our country. How can human beings, right? How can human beings look at each other, murder, plunder, yeah, meme each other? Human beings, Almighty God says, the best of the creation. But we have changed the direction from our soul to our body. And that's the mistake we are making. We are making today. Today. And Alhamdulillah, the holy month of Ramadan affords us as Muslims that opportunity mm -hmm. to feel that. Yes, definitely. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Imam Sahib, thank you very much for your contribution. Sure. We do hope our dear viewers, to if our insights, appreciated some of the feedback with regards to some of the questions. And I know that there will be many more coming throughout the course of the program, which we'll put forward to the respective Imams at the particular masjids that we are going to. And uh, Imam, I was noticing on our way up here, uh, Fazir earlier spoke about the preschool downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're on the, this level here. There was something else going on. Maybe you can give a little description yeah. on our way out as to exactly what a madrasa is. We hear the, the terminology quite yeah. often. We know it's something of a school-related nature, but maybe you can elaborate for us. Sure. A little bit. If you can make a walk you know, outside, we will uh, see yeah. exactly what the madrasa is. Inshallah. Inshallah. And welcome once again, viewers. Uh, you're tuned into the 11th episode of Iftar Insights. We did uh, just a short while ago have quite an interesting conversation with Imam Rashid Shah. And here he is now. We are in the midst of the madrasa, which is for some of the elder students. And I'd like for him, you know, to explain a little bit more as to what takes place up here, as we've touched already on the preschool downstairs, which, as he was mentioning, something is going to take somewhat of a change to make more accommodation for congregational prayer and functions and so on. But Imam, let's hear it in your words as to what's going on with the door, Jama. Okay, well, this area is, is the madrasa area, right? So madrasa really, you know, we have a misconception of madrasa, you know. In the Western world, sometimes when you hear the word madrasa, you know, we feel it's a training ground for jihadists, you know, for you know, Muslim, you know, terrorists and so on, you know. It's quite true. But, but the madrasa really means, you know, it's really a complete, complete education of the individual, both academic and spiritual. So you would have physics and maths? We we'll have and maths, other... English, science, you know, I those see. kind of stuff. In addition, 
building the individual spiritually within the Quran and the, the, the practices of the Prophet. So their whole life, you know, is given attention. Yeah, so it's a way more holistic so approach, approach to, to education. Yeah. I think if we do this, and actually, and, you know, we have Hafiz Farzan is right there. Yes. And we have actually taken students, or, or even before students, you know, children who were abused, who were really neglected by parents, and, and today they are actually leading Salat. They have become Hafiz of Quran. Alhamdulillah. They have become Maulanas, you know. You see? So this is the whole aspect, and this is the whole dream and vision of the madrasa. So we must not look at madrasas as a training ground for terrorists or nothing like this. Yes. But you know, madrasa means Quite the opposite. a complete, well-rounded education so that the individual could really be of benefit to himself and society. And community, yes. And it, yeah? Alhamdulillah. 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 Well, Imam, Jazakallah khair for your, your patience and time with us this evening. And I do hope that a lot of what you've shared with us yeah, this yeah. afternoon has proven valuable to our dear viewers on Iftar Insights. Yeah. And I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the team to extend to you and your family Allah's choicest blessings sure. and, and may you get the fullest and richest reward mm -hmm. of the holy and blessed month of Ramadan. And I'm I sure. must also say, you know, thanks very much for uh, I'm sacrificing your Iftar and your time to come down south. You know, my Allah bless you all for the nice work you're doing in spreading Islam. Because in my opinion, Islam is the solution to all the problems of the world. And the more people can understand this by our display, practically, I think we'll reach a far way in bringing stability to the world at large, inshallah. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sitting right next to me is a gentleman from the Dao village, South Uruputsh Jamaat, that has been involved from day one. Uh, he's known Imam Rashid Shah as a, a little boy. Uh, he's good friends with his father and so on. So he's well known in the area, in the district, and he's been very heavily involved in this Jamaat for many, many, many a year. He is the eldest uh, surviving member of the, this Jamaat, and I also have the pleasure of him being uh, my father-in-law. So I'd like to introduce to you now, Mr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakat, uh, Brother Papi, or Zahid Mohammed of the Dow Village Jamaat. Assalamu alaikum. Pa. Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Assalamu alaikum to one and all. If I should recall, sometime between the years of 1970 to 1980, the one time president of Asja, Haji Rafiq, Shafiq Rahman, came to our village at Dow Village, South Uruputs, with some bro brothers from Astia. He gathered some of the brothers in our village and, and formed a Jamaat. From there onward, we started regular Salat and Juma at one of my brothers home, Amir Muhammad, at Dow Village Junction. We had an, an Imam from India named Katar Jamna, Katim Jama, and he did a wonderful job over the period of years. After a while, we moved over to a larger area an old rice mill by the owner of Husini Subhan. He had an old rice mill which was abandoned and we started to read our Salat and um, Juma Salat there. During which time we, we went, we and our Muslim brothers, president and, and secretary and all went all over Trinidad and Tobago and, um, and to various masjids to look for donation to build a mosque. Um, getting an amount of money, we started to be, we looked, we had a, the, the site come cleaned up and prepared and started build a mosque. We built a wooden building and, and on the completion of this mosque, we, we came over from the rice mill area and um, started to read our salat and, and um, do all our, our routine as, as, as Muslim would completely doing. At one time, we had problem in finding an imam. We got a, what we got a, a member of um, Avukat Jama to come and do our our our, our 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 salat. We got a brother by the name of Jalil Masahud of the Avukat Jama. We had different imam over the years by the name of Azim Muhammad from Dow Village. He did a few few years with us. Or Jerry Hussein from Zobo Village. Yaakub Khan from Ari Peru, 
And to up to this present time, our present Imam, Brother Rashid Shah, he has been doing a wonderful job keeping the Jama together and making progress from strength to strength. During this period of time, we collected more money and we were in a position by the donation of many businessmen and people, we have, we, we have broken down the, 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 the wooden moss and built a, 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 a massive um, concrete structure. By the help of Allah, um, we, are, we are blessed with our, our, our wonderful Imam, Brother Rashid Shah. He's now a Maulana and doing a, a wonderful job. His foresight and his, and his foresight, we have now, we have now um, doing some heavy construction work, which costs a few, a few, a few hundred thousand dollars. We ask Allah to bless all the brothers and sisters who have contributed immensely to the progress of the Jamaat. And we are like one happy family, enjoying ourselves by the grace of Almighty Allah. And thanks to everybody for their donations and their contribution toward the upliftment of the Jamaat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brother Zaid Mohammed, for that very detailed uh, historical account. Uh, and from the sound of it, you were there all through it. All the time. Yeah. And so, hence your recollection, a very vivid one at that, I must say, at the tender age of 84. Yeah, May Allah can. continue to give you health and strength uh, to be the active member of the Jamaat that you still continue to be mm -hmm. and continue to be a, you know, a guide, a guiding light to all of the youths who look up to you in this Jamaat. Mm -hmm. uh, he's known by all of the young members in this, in this community and he's also he's very, very supportive to each and every one of them. Thank you so my dear brothers and sisters, this is where we pull the curtains down uh, on another episode. Do hope you have enjoyed from the Dao Orupuch uh, Masjid and look forward to continued Iftar Insights, uh, episode 12, come tomorrow at the Sangri Grandi Mosque. Mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam.